for me, I always had a clear indication, like it was a puku gut feeling. I, I said no to the stance four times, like straight to people's faces, no, I'm not doing it. Because I know that what was ahead of me, and like you could clearly see in my eyes um, when they I had announced that, oh yeah, ka tuga i te pāti Māori ki taka kura. Um, it, it, you wouldn't see me smiling because <laughs> I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, and I, the competition was, what I said on that day was the competition will never be about me or Nanaya, mm. as the competition is about how well we play the game to the system and that there could be two people representing Hauraki Waikato. So there is, there is a huge part of me that wishes that there is two of us now, yeah. uh, was two of us, but now that there's um, six of us from Te Pāti Māori, is, that's pretty cool, I reckon. is the youngest Member of Parliament in New Zealand since 1853 and at just 21 years of age defeated the then Minister of Foreign Affairs in New Zealand's government, Nanaya Mahita, in the Hauraki Waikato electorate in New Zealand's elections in 2023. But Hana Maipi Clark is more than just a politician. She is a gardener and an author, writing a book on Maramataka Maori, focused on the health and well-being benefits of observing the traditional Maori lunar calendar. Here she talks to us about how she is tūpuna-led in everything she does, and in particular in her life as a new politician. This is Hana Rāwhiti, my big class on Indigenous 100. Hana Rāwhiti mai pi Clark e ko te nā koe. No mai, no mai ki te rau take take. Welcome to Indigenous 100. Thank you for joining us. There's also a huge sense of pride um, that someone can achieve something at such a young age that is powerful and is historic, um, but also um, inspires Altamariki. And I just wanted to start by wondering what that's like for you when people say things like that about you. Mm, because I guess like e e e rangona na e te tino harikwa na tamariki te kitinga tu. Ingare sometimes I just feel like say oh. I'm just Hana. <laughs> just <laughs> need to chill out. <laughs> um, but I think e haki te mea koau, engari katino kitia e rato, i a rato ano i roto i ai. Um, ka hoki ake ngā fakaro ki te mana kuratahi, ko te te o ngā kōrero ngā waiata koe ko koe ko hana. Mm. E haki i te mea koa hau, engari ka kiti e rato, i ngā tupuna, i o rato moe moe ha, i roto i tēnei momo tu. Mm. So, you said ko 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 hana. What's it like hearing people saying things like that when the name hana means so much to a lot of us, particularly given the beti hana reo Māori and mea tuku e tō ingoa me pēna pēntakoru. E, e ngari ko huri ai and it's you that carries that name now. And I wonder what that's like given your auntie, te rawhaia, Ooh, karanga whai ooh, you know, that you have to, there's a bit of responsibility there about that name and upholding the manner of that name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Deep, eh? <hey? laughs> <laughs> it's, I remember last year when we took uh, the pitihana oh, to my maharai yep. te pitihana rima te koutou o ngā tamatoa. And like my slogan was, I am Hana. Ingari e hake te mea ko au, ko i a ke. Um, but I am, aha te rā nei, Julian. I am 
uh, porere nui arua. I am just the personification and manifestation of our tūpuna. Hara i te mea ko koe, engari, yep. ko ngā tūpuna. Yeah, yeah, funny enough saying I am Julie, it doesn't look very much All power, now that I think of that. Um, but the, the reason why it, this strikes me now is because you're, you're 21 and you've got so much of your life to live and so much more service and commitment to give to our people. Um, and yet it must be something that you think about and when it strikes you, what's that like? You know, just having to deal with that at such a young age. Um, because already people are saying, not only have you, have you been called to service, you've been called to lead us. Um, sometimes during the campaign, I will be honest, there was, it was very, very heavy because it's not the parliament politics that you're worrying about. I actually couldn't care less what national act in New Zealand First are trying to portray or trying to do. It's actually attending Pokai, our own kofanganui. That's the real politics. <laughs> Ko ngā, ngā uh, tautohi o te pai pai. Uh, and tending to that and making sure, well, how do I make sure I'm tending to that uh, te rā to, te ao to mm. uh, So that was the heavy load. That is, that hasn't gone, but at least that I know that I've attended to those areas that are so crucial for our iwi. Mm. That may, um, a lot of other iwi may not know of or may not hear because uh, Waikato, Ko mahi he kaitiaki he ringa toha ki te kingitanga. Engari, inside of Waikato, uh, waitressing, paukai, ena momo mahi, you don't really hear those kōrero often what goes on. So, tending to that first was was a lot. Yeah. Doing the hugger for the kingi. <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think that's why you won? The fact that you were omnipresent in the rohe, that you were at all the hui, that you were, as you say, waitressing, attending, um, listening. I think, and in medicinal tuku mihi mātou, au, ki a whaina nai, nā, yeah. mei kore a kiko ia, e kore au e tū, ki te whai tēnei ara, kua para e e ia. And to be a foreign affairs minister and tend to rāhui pōkika, that's a, that's a huge gap. But I think the energy, because I was, felt like I was running two campaigns, one on social media, one at Pokai's, one at Komatua, one at Tillers, but the energy was chase, not chasing the seat, but attracting the people. Yeah. There's a huge difference between like uh, rich dad, poor dad, chasing money between attracting money. Yeah. So. Oh, you said that to me on the election night. <clears throat> you said that it wasn't about getting a seat. Uh, it was about being at the table mm. and advocating for our people, mm. uh, which again kind of struck me as such a powerful thing because you never saw this as a race between you and Anaya, even though to the outside world that mm. is what this was about. It was mm. about someone winning a seat. In your view, you were very clear. You said, no, 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 this is about a voice for us and our people <clears throat> and advocacy for us and our people at a very powerful place in parliament, but with the direction of the people and the support of the people with you. Now that you've started to make your way in and you were there, has anything changed? Nothing's changed. I think the, um, for me, I always had a clear indication, like it was a puku gut feeling. I, I said no to the stance four times, like straight to people's faces, no, I'm not doing it. Because I know that what was ahead of me, and I, you could clearly see in my eyes um, when they, I had announced that, oh yeah, um, you wouldn't see me smiling because <laughs> I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, and I, the competition was, what I said on that day was the competition will never be about me or Nanaya, mm. as the competition is about how well we play the game to the system and that there could be two people representing Hauraki Waikato. So there is, there's a huge part of me that wishes that there is two of us now, yeah. uh, was two of us, but now that there's um, six of us from Te Pāti Māori, is, that's pretty cool, I reckon. Can, can, that's a really good point you make about um, the choices that voters made, because at the end, I think Te Pāti Māori, 3.1%, that being the case, um, if the other seats have fallen the way they have, and you hadn't won, you might not have made it. Um, but in the end, you win that race. And it brings me to another point, which, and, and I think a, pr a pretty pivotal point in the in the election, 
where you turned up at our studio on the Friday mm. after having just gone into a police station, having someone raided your house and turn up at your house, not for the first time, I think for the third time in two weeks, if my memory serves me right, and you're expected to do this debate. Now, here's the power, I think, of Māori politics probably isn't the right word, but but kaupapa Māori approaches is that um, one of the first things the Nai does is he say, you're right. Um, and then you, in a really bold and brazen and brave way, make the statement that you make that night, which is, you know, uh, this is you and you will not be dulled and you will not be torn away from this and you will not be swayed by it. Um, but at that particular time in the campaign, did you ever think about this is too much? I don't, I don't want to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember actually asking uh, my parents, like, am I going to survive on this campaign? Like, will I make it out alive? I truly, truly remember asking that. And I just didn't see any other politicians or any other people. Like, it's not that a politician. You know you get the, it's not an easy job. It's really tough. And you've put yourself out there to represent people. And people have the freedom of speech to not like what you're saying. And I get that. But to invade your personal pri privacy, your home, your everything is being so young. And then my friends came over and they said, no, because then we have to take all your signs off and we're not doing that. So we were really intentional about saying, I'm not, I'm not going to put myself in here and do this without your help. Like I can't do this by myself. So it was really about telling our people that um, if this generation has made it this far, with all your support, we need to go harder and go stronger. Um, and yeah, I, I only said we're here. <laughs> we didn't really do much. It's incredibly difficult, though. I. Eh? What we didn't quite realise was that this is what it will be like in and outside of that house. And what are we going to do about that to really hold these people to, to account that, no, 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 you come for me, you come for all of us. And that's what the stance was representing. It's not just Hauraki Waikato, it's not just Waiariki, it's not just Te Taito Kero. It's actually all Indigenous people, younger generations, who have gone to the uh, whakatauki of Apirana, to Apirana mm. when we've made it that far um, and that's the sacrifice of Nanaia of uh, Māori what are we going to do to keep going because we've always been kind of told oh you're an entitled generation you just go on your phone <laughs> And I was sick of hearing that from my pops. So I said, oh, well, I'm going to do something about it and carry on. So, yeah. You, you diplomatically didn't say what your father said. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I respect the decision to do that because um, he may or may not be in the room with us now. But, um, but just on your mother's side, I mean, obviously you are, and I want to get this right, it is your great, 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 great grandfather, when we got to him, who was the first minister, Māori minister for the Crown. So was that in the back of the mind as well, though, that, I can get through this because if he has, I can. That was probably the one thing that let my mum say that, oh, well, you you can do this. Yeah. Um, because she was really heavy on saying no, because I don't think people will understand what it will be like to watch their daughter go through what she'll go through. Um, in politics, no, no one wakes up and says like, oh yeah, I want to be a politician. <laughs> For Instagram followers, no, that's just not how it works. Um, so, and there was a lot of iwi and marae we had to go around and ask and say, like, kia to koutou whakaaro, kura, uh, kingitanga, e ramu mo ahuatanga, nā rātou anō te tono. Nō reira, um, I guess that was probably the one thing that kept us sane was there were two puna that looked after us outside of the house from petitions. There were two puna that looked after us mm -hmm. inside of the house and kei reira o kaitiaki um, and yeah. Yeah. I heard a rumour. Mm. The rumour was that if you said no, your father would have to do it. <laughs> and that was the, now the fact you're laughing suggests that the rumour is true. Yeah. And that being the case, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank, thought, you, thank oh, you for no. saying yes. I'm not standing there with my dad's face going, you remember my phone? <laughs> Sorry, no. <nah. laughs> we'll move on. Um, um, but but what we, and there's a lot more to talk about, and I, I don't want to focus just on politics uh, for, for a number of reasons, because actually I think you're a reluctant politician, right? And so I do want to give you the due respect of the fact you do a lot more out of your life in politics that actually I think you really, really care about and want to talk about. So we will get there. But I just wanted to finish off on this bit, if I can, and loop it around. On the political bar, is the aspiration one day to be Prime Minister? And if not, why not? Not at all. Not at all. Why not? Uh, I've seen, I think Jacinda was a, an amazing uh, Prime Minister and the threats and it's not the people that follow you, it's the threats and... I think the the hate and evilness that's in making it that far that um, you end up getting burnt out. I think what we have to, what I was told is you have to know when you've got to get in, but you need to know when you've got to get out as well. Um, and I think I'm not going to be here for 30 years because that's not my aspiration. It's about keeping that engine moving for another person to come through because Unfortunately, it's me for now, but there's so many more of us who've gone through this kohanga reo generation, um, even mainstream, even reo rua, who have this same aspiration. Yeah. So, so how do you look after yourself now then, given that you know you're already a victim of abuse and direct threat? What do you do to look after yourself and who looks after you? Um, it's kind of crazy that I think you never thought you would because you have so much whanau, um, you have so much uncles, aunties, Māori, non-Māori, um, from all different generations looking after you, but it doesn't really matter how much support or security you have, sometimes people are just going to come to you and you have to know how to hold yourself properly. So drinking the water, going to the gym and learning how to fight is one thing. <laughs> um, but I think making it so public that no, we like I'm not going to write, because I didn't want it out there. I said, no, I don't want anyone to know. I'm not saying it. But then the more we swept it under the carpet, the more that other people think they could get away with this. Yeah. And it was not keyboard warriors, it was like house warriors yeah. coming into your house. Yeah, it was direct. It was direct. To your house. Yeah. So we couldn't just wipe it under the carpet. And I think the more Māori are staunch on saying no, um, and me being very assertive of that to say, because when I got in that house, people didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to touch me, to look at me. And I said, that's the stance that we needed because that's what will look after us. Um, I've got tupuna in here. I've got people out there. Because you're such a clear target. Yeah. And thankfully you also have some experience in the whānau. I mean, your paternal grandfather is not backward in coming forward about kaupapa Māori issues. <laughs> so there's a lot of experience um, within the whānau of um, really brave stances, actually, on behalf of the iwi, of hapu, of Māori, of standing up, of resistance, of, of advocacy um, and a part of me thinks well you kind of really had no choice at the end of, <laughs> at the end of the day you know I mean given who your grandfather is as I said on your dad's side and given you know your tupuna on your mother's side you know it kind of makes real sense that you are at now where you're at but that was that ever a conscious thought when you're younger, and that seems a really weird thing to say when you're only 21 years old. But anyway, when you were one, when you were younger, did you ever think this is where I'd end up? Given those fuck up up lines, um, I think I've seen the real. To be really honest, the real shit end of it as to why I would never want to go into that world. Um, even you know, um, it's all. And I don't want to sound cocky, but I'm almost getting praise for my mahi. There's a huge time in my grandfather's and namesake's time where they were spat at from their own people. You know, they really? were told not to um, establish the kura because that's not where our children will get education or be able to uh, pay for the themselves. So it, so it's almost kind of like Ngā Tamatoa wasn't a kei pō he he tātou he atua rātou. 
Carl, uh, they were, um, it was really hard to push the status quo. My grand, my grandfather's mother um, was act- was very conservative on the stances that my grandfather made. Um, and, you know, even a lot of us didn't think, well, why is Pop taking the hamlets of the statue? Why is he pulling down these signs? And why is he wearing Ku Klux Klan in Gallagher? Um, and it's, but it caused us to make these constant questions in our heads thinking, oh, okay, now we know why he's done that. Why is he doing that? Um, but it's, it, I don't want people to think that my fucker papa is almost like a privilege or like an entitlement because it's kind of been, um, harder mm. knowing that. You know, your grandfather, oh, what's Timmy doing now? You know, when you're going to Hui and stuff. That's why I decided to do Maramata because <laughs> my father didn't know that. So um, just making but that fire when I would be his Uber driver, going to Māori wards, going to take him to these places, I wasn't even invited. I don't even think he was invited. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> You hear it, and we karango na koe, karango na koe te kai tangata. Yeah. And you just make room for submission and you go hard, and it's inevitable. It's truly inevitable. Yeah. That, I've just figured out actually that phrase that you just mentioned, karango koe te kai tangata. Um, because I'm, I'm keen to know what that drive is that actually turns your thinking from just merely the thought of doing something to actually going and doing something. Say the petition that we just talked about, right? Or indeed your maramataka mahi. What's the part at which you get the fire inside, some people refer to it as the fire in the valley, where that comes up and you think, I've got to go do this thing. And then the point at which it transitions to action. For you, how does that work in that process in your mind that then drives you to go and action what you're thinking. That fire in your belly for me is like pre kopu thinking. Like haha etihimia for my future tamariki mokopuna that I want them to have and what I don't want them to see. That's it. I want them to be able to grow kumara from whakaotirangi, boom, let's go kumara. I want them to understand maramataka, let's go write a maramataka book and listen to papareriata. There's so many things that kōpū thinking in me that just drives me to go beyond. That's a cool phrase, kōpū thinking. Has that always been the case? Might I not for you? Where does that come from? You're going to say from the corpu, but, but <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I'm interested because no one's ever said it that way in an interview that I've done. I'm, I've, this is the first time I've heard the phrase of corpu thinking, and I'm just interested where that, what, where the invigoration source point comes from. Is it a mental thing or is it a manua thing, or as you say? It's the meeting point between everything, and ko koera te whare tuatahi o te tangata, te whare tangata. And is that, is that... Pretty much everything that that's the decision making process for you about whether you do or not do something. What's that like for I don't know? What's that like for your mum and dad when they see that and they see you making decisions in that way? Because people always try and overthink things, right? And there's a tick box process. And to be honest, that's kind of what I do. There's a tick box process that says, yeah, 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 tick all those boxes, okay, bang. Um, some might say it's called thinking from the gut. I actually don't think it is that. I think it's a lot more kind of spiritual and and natural um, and maybe a bit mystical for some people to make a decision in that way. So what's it like for mum and dad when they see you making decisions that way? Because that's hard to control. Um, mum's very, well, that's completely two opposite people. One's from Waikato, one's from Ngapi. <laughs> They they already have an unbalanced. The one's telling me yes, one's telling me no. Put your kōpū. Katino kiti e te huarahi e inga kau nui tiana e au. Have you always been pretty much your own decision maker? Have you always pretty much said, okay, I'm gonna? Huh? If it's that, or oh, well, dad doesn't 
if it was up to him, he wouldn't want to wake up doing tāwhara class <laughs> at Waipa <laughs> and mum wouldn't want to be going down to Wellington. So, um, yeah, a lot of those uh, for Carl was just hearing. It's it's honestly hearing our tupuna. So I would think a pivotal time for me was being lucky enough to do the interviews um, for all of the claimants on our, uh, and funny that comes around in a circle, of the um, settlement. And I was a transcriber and I was listening to people like uh, Sir Robert Mahuta, listening to people uh, like uh, Lady Daiha, listening to people like Shane Solomon who were pivotal in that time, my pop, um, in that era. And when you hear something like that, okay, now what am I going to do? And that's just how it is. You hear what they've done, but what are you going to do? Wow. <laughs> so, um, so is that the same process you, that led you to, say, go do something like kickboxing? <laughs> mm, that was just because it was COVID and I was listening to our dad <laughs> pass us around and I was like, oh, no, I need to get out of here. For the <laughs> <laughs> that was the only other place. But, yeah. But you did really well in that, as I recall. Like it was, uh, mm. you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's not every day that people think, oh, well, I'm going to go fight some people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go kickboxing and, you know, go and do something like that. It's not a, people think about it, but they don't end up doing it. Because, you know, it's that Mike Tyson thing. Everyone's really brave until they get hit in the face. <laughs> I think um, for me, it was like, okay, What's the bestest way that I my muscles and my ahua can do the same things that my tupuna did? So hine keira, uh, fa fakia, uh, fakaotirangi, uh, hine tirehia, ena momo wahine atua that I can not be like, but have those same actions. That's like a adrenaline rush moment for me that just makes my kōpū go. <laughs> What were your teachers saying about you when you were at Akaimana? Why are you asking so many questions about the world? You're one of those ones. <laughs> are you? Wow. I knew there was a reason why there was something eerily similar about you. Some, something, something about her that seems eerily familiar to me. Wow, is, is that true, is it? You were always the inquisitive one. Just, oh, well, no, because... I was the dumbest person at maths, and now I'm telling Parliament how to run their tax system. So I went there. So no, 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 no. I it was definitely blonde at Kura. Still am, but there's <laughs> moments where I'm like, oh yeah, no, let's go save the world. But <laughs> there's definitely cap. I'm not all that. I'm just Hannah, and had some moments that really strike my corpu to go do things. Um, and then there's stuff where I feel like I'm just the same as everyone else at the kura, um, and still trying to get my times tables. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you said you you ask a lot of questions, right? Um, and some teachers like that, and they like the precociousness of, and curiosity of you. Others don't tend to kind of um, like that. They just want you to take what they've said and learn it, and then go away. Um, did any of them? think at a time when you were at Kura, at Akaimang, I think, hmm, this girl's got something, she's going to go places. Did you ever hear something like that from her? I heard one teacher tell my dad, just don't burn her out. Really? <laughs> yeah. At our parent interviews. Quite annoying. Just don't burn the fire thing. Yeah. <laughs> he? She? He. Probably right. <laughs> 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 Turned out to be right. <laughs> Did you have any idea of what you were going to do at Kura? No. no. Not at all? Not at all. Um, at that time, I uh, was trying to tell my teachers that we should follow Maramataka. And they were like, ha ha. I said, me u tātou ki nga āwhatanga o te Maramataka e tino ki te ai pē whiato tātou hoki ki te awa. Yeah. Um, Where did that come from? Your first kind of acknowledgement of Manamataka. Where did you first encounter it? Um, e Kiteo Itoku uh, Fire, Aliliana, uh, 
ko tana kai a ko, uh, ko papariata. I saw it when she would see the rhythms and patterns with my cousin, who is three months younger than me, who has Asperger's and autism. Mm-hmm. And ko tana mahi he tauri te uh, i ona rongoa ki te maramataka, and you would be able to see his patterns, and that was just natural. Ingari karia i tino kite i te i rango na i te na um, tino pū manawa ki te maramataka. Tainua i haere au ki te tihi o ngā um, uh, lecture matariki nights uh, i reira ko papahoturua uh, ko uh, ahorangi rangi mā tāmua rā tai ko papareata ki te au i te tihi awana. <laughs> ki te au i rangi atia. <laughs> Tino hua ki nao kufatu. Ne? He pēhe nei tō timatanga ki te aku i ena kōrero, ki te whai haere, ki te whakamahira ana i ena kōrero. Ko taku uh, mahi tuatahi, my first ever job that I haven't been paid for, but gets paid, <laughs> um, was transcribing all of uh, Pini Taiapa's maramataka scriptures, digitalizing all of our archives in Maramataka. Uh, and Te Pui uh, in the Te Pui Orchards alongside uh, uh, Sir Apira Nangata. In Rotorua. In Rotorua. Uh-huh. So taking those archives and word for word, every single in Kamatai ki Rotoi Taku And I had a huge appreciation for the way that our tupuna adapted and the way that they were able to um, adapt kai, mā tauranga, whenua, wai, um, and then I tested it in our own garden. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, because I've been known to hang out with a certain individual whose name might be Bidet <laughs> Um And, um, like, I, I sit in awe of him, eh, because oh, he's just on another level. You know, him and Rangi and them, and Hotu, and they're just different people, right? So I'm still struggling, you know, it was all tane, right? <laughs> and I'm going, oh, um, oh, why did that happen? Oh, it's all tane. Oh, no wonder, you know. Uh, and so I'm still getting to grips with the uh, preparatory kind of forward thinking process. Oh, okay, uh, you know, call it all, come to, you know, go feed or fight, would you, okay, mm, stink buzz. Um, but, you know, I still don't have that kind of understanding, granular understanding that Matua Te Rata has about implementation and practice. And um, I guess the question is, is that where, where do you see yourself with your understanding and knowledge of the Manabataka? Because I know you've been doing Mahimata, but say, for instance, in your political life, you know, at, at, what's, at what level of understanding are you at to be able to say, right, so on this day I can start thinking about bang, 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 bang. I think the greatest tools of our ancestors that have let them survive like the nation that survived was because of maramata, was because of mahinga kai, was because of the ability to navigate. And those skills can still be used whether you are a carpenter, whether you're a politician, but how do you adapt and use those? So like, for instance, I was saying in our group chat, oh, the rise and fall of the um, poles are the same as the maramataka rising and falling. Really? And they're like, what the hell? <laughs> What's your- <laughs> so there's just little things that you pick up here and there, and I'm yet to see what a tamatea atua whakahai hai looks like in Parliament. I'll get back to everyone. <laughs> see, in Ngāpui, we don't have a tamatea atua whakahai. Uh, We've got, we got a few tamateas, but not, not a tamatea atua whakahai. No, it's true. I mean, I remember talking to a couple of people at Matatini in, in Auckland, and I said, oh, when are you on? And they said, we're on on the Wednesday at 11.30, and I looked when the tide was and what the day was, and I said, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> made the finals. I won't say who it was. They made the finals. But, you know, you're right. It is kind of um, not eerie uh, or spooky, but it's just kind of like, oh, wow. You know, just the way things happen in line with those movements, high tide, low tide, all that kind of thing. right? And you start thinking to yourself, oh, I've got this sussed. And then, boom, something happens. <laughs> and then I went, then I ring my to and go, hmm, this happened. Oh, yeah, where are we? Oh, yeah, that would be right. You know, I guess, that, again, it's not really a question. It's just a comment about the fact that um, that you're, I'm interested in the way in which your application of that 
bears fruit or, or indeed is, is action when you're in Wellington in a place like Parliament, which is so environmentally completely out of touch and out of line and not in alignment at all with Mataranga Māori, Kaupapa Māori. Yeah, I, I've only ever been to Wellington for Matatini, Matariki and a Maramatakawana. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm in Parliament in Wellington and the whole, everyone's in a rush, everyone's walking really fast, everyone's got key tags and I'm observing all of these things and it's the complete opposite to Huntley. So... <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're you're comparing, I literally feel like I'm in two different worlds, not even just um, from Huntley to Wellington, but Te Ao Māori uh, and the Western world being in a Westminster uh, parliament system. Mm. So how do I balance that? How do I make sure that I'm above water, that I'm still going to sleep, drinking my water? So uh, really looking at it in two different perspectives, and I think that's what, um, you know, I'm, I just said there's only one thing that I'm truly here for, and that's to um, oppose everything the Toyunga Suppression Act once stood for. Mm. And that was a huge reason as to why I wanted to stand um, rather than the tunnels coming was because of that Therapeutics Products Bill. Uh. So there was, there was some motives as to, no, 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 I don't think other parties are actually making sure that they are... Um, not set, letting some of these legislation see the light of day. Um, and I think, you know, with the new results that's come out, even though National and ACT can look like they will form the government, you'll see 30% more Māori in Parliament. So mm. I think, yeah, they dog whistle to them, but then they whistle to our people as well. Yeah, and our people respond. It's a tremendous leveller, eh? You know, when you go back home and you're just, as you say, I'm just Hana. Got to go do the haka at the Kiwis game. <laughs> the haka at the... So we've been doing that for 10 years straight and then all the kids are like, oh, they take your photos of you now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's... Yeah, but I think that's what our home does is it just... Um, it keeps you humble, but it also keeps you grounded. And I think... You know, I see. I openly would keep saying, like, there's only one line that I need to stay on, and that's the line between humility and confidence, because I still have to be confident in what I do mm. down there. Because when we get down there, that's not the same hunter that you see in Huntley, because you're the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when you're at home, my frequency just rises. Um, it's I don't know. It's a, it's an unexplainable feeling, but people who know me back home just know that. Yeah. Uh, are you any good at kapahaka? Mm, I can't <laughs> sing. I can't do a solo. You can't do the solo. You can't do the solo. Nah. I've been told that be. too, but I don't believe it. I mean, do you believe that? No, no, no. Hara iti kaitata. Hara I'm not the walking matatini. <laughs> really? There is cold. Because your younger sister's quite a good performer too, you know. She's a cool one. Yeah. yeah? She's the boss. Is she really? <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting dynamic, hey, you and your sister. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, because similar ages, but completely different people. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a bad thing. Well, that's cool, man. That is, yeah, she I love it. me humble. To be honest, I wouldn't change what I was doing. And I think that's kind of the ahua that I want to change is I'm not an MP. To other people it might be, but I'm a kaitaki of a seat that I will hold for only so long before I succession it out to someone else. Yeah, I'm your kaitaki. This comes up quite a lot with you. You talk about kaitaki a lot, and you used it, again, in the political sense, but you also use it in everything you do. So what does that mean for you? Kaitaki tanga is, for me, is just the handing down of a stick going past. And you don't, you don't own it. Like you don't own that and you can be a protector of that messenger stick of whether that's doing a post on Instagram and saying Queen te marama or atua whakahaihai, whether that's talking to Fano and saying this is a resource book that you can have, whether that's listening to Fano on the marae about their taki because you hold a, a platform that you can give them a voice but as long as they hear you 
and see you and you hear them and you see them. That's an exchange of pātūtū of kaitaki tangatū. But so you, that's a tremendous skill that you have that not a lot of people have. People that, people like me think we can talk really well. <clears throat> we don't have a great ability to listen. Um, so the skill to be able to do that well is, is not something lots of people have. Like, you know that, eh? <laughs> I think, yeah, listening is just as important as talking. And um, I've heard quite a lot in the media that, like, oh, you ran such a, su- a successful social media campaign. I was like, I wasn't even on my socials. There were yeah. other people doing that for me. I was actually um, going around the whole electorate on a bus, four places a day, listening to the people. And that's a lot to take in. It is a lot. That's probably what made it so heavy was listening to everyone's tucky and challenges and good outcomes and bad outcomes. But that's a lot to endure. Mm. Um, but that is probably the rich corridor. Whether there were five people there, whether they're like, oh, Kari, why are you even doing that? <laughs> Some people were like, oh, you poor thing. Why, why do you think you will get in there? Oh, and oh, on a um, in a nice way, mm. you know. Um, but we still went hard. There were 70 people sometimes and we still went hard. And I said, I'm here and there's a high possibility that we can take all of our kōrero, kararau, te haokite, um, kawiki paremata. So I've never heard Kaitiaki Tonga explain that way. Yet it makes perfect sense. And possibly the reason I don't hear it explained that way is because I hang out with too many old people. And um, I've struggled to kind of understand how to deliver those messages and communicate um, that kind of notion of kaitiakitanga in the way that you've just done it, um, which makes it more relevant to a much younger audience, which they will get absolutely. And I think that's, to be honest with you, I think that's one of our biggest problems, which is why people like you are so important. Because as a communicator, not and you're right, I, I don't see you as an MP, even though that's your official title. Yeah. But I see you more as a practitioner, as staunch advocate for kaitiakitanga in as many forms, on it, in as many places as possible. And the way in which you've just talked about how you actualize that is actually really important. And that's one of my fears, is that we've forgotten the art of listening. Which is weird, because we're brought up in a wānanga culture, which accentuates that to the nth degree. Um, and here I am talking... And you're listening, which is you actually giving effect to what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, but I do think that. I do think that we've lost the art of listening and remembering to listen to enable us to remember to remember. Um, and have, is that something that you've encountered a lot? Is that we've got a lot of these people and not a lot of these people? Um, I've got really, really hard grandmothers queer around me that just go hard on me and they just go um yeah they're pretty handy and I've always grown up listening to them um they're the ones telling my pop what to do you know they're the the pie at the back telling them how to run the pie pie you know I think there's a huge notion that the pie pie run itself oh um, te whakariti, te, i te marae. So those kuia, um, and they're so humble, nana tutata, nana kotiro, uh, nana heke te rangi ka whakaroa ke kia rātou, um, ngā kuia o te pākiwahi. Um, and they're the bosses to my pop, not the other way around. So, yeah, ko rātou ki. You can see I'm laughing because um, that message and that, point absolutely resonates <laughs> as someone who pretends they know what they're doing on the tomata um, and would like to think they're making decisions I, I hear what you're saying <laughs> very very clearly I hear what you're saying um, can, can I ask you this then there is a lot of anxiety about the next government in this country and what they will do there are a lot of issues Maori issues being talked about that will be a focus of attention for those parties who are now former coalition and thus form a government in the country. How do you assuage the concerns and anxieties people have when we hear things like a referendum on Tetiriti, or on treaty principles, or the disestablishment of the Waitangi Tribunal, or the definite disestablishment of Te Akawhaiora? 
how do you assuage people's concerns or even should you? Do you see that as your role? I think as soon as I got in, I had text messages coming in constantly of already the responsibilities and concerns that Fano had of nunners, of Fano and gangs, of Fano saying, what do I have to wear makeup now and take my patch off? Um, no. <laughs> and we have to make sure that on all fronts, we all, um, it's, Te Pāti Māori isn't a party, it's a movement. And that's what we keep trying to tell our whānau is that um, we will be there for you, but we need you just as much as you need us because it has to be a movement force around, okay, if they're coming up with um, referendums on the treaty, then, like Fadi B said, they're going to see the biggest hikwe in the world. And more, potentially. <laughs> and yeah, more. Yeah. So, um, Fire Maria Mino also quoted, well, we're those pebbles in your shoe that you can't get out. Now there's six of them. And then you've also got Te Mātāwaka of the Green Party. So, like I said, again, it whistled to uh, their constituents, but then it also told our people that they won't stand for this. And we've got 30% more Māori in there. And I, as crazy as it does sound, I'm so excited to see what we can do to push back and to hold that front line to make sure they can't get over us because they will do it with the pen and that's koira te rau te pene ko tā me te ai a tātou mo te wārua. Does that give you anxiety? Does that give you concern that that is definitely going to be the play that we're going to see in the next three years? Um, for me, I, I've seen it firsthand, like I've experienced it in my house that nothing else can shake me or rock me that um, there's a coping mechanism that I've used to say, well, no, you can't, David. No, 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 you can't do that, Luxon. And you're just so forward heading about it around, um, they will try and scare you, they will try and intimidate you, they will try and do everything to do to get to you. But the people who try to do the Tohunga Suppression Act, honga mataku, they should just be as scared as much as we should. So it's a two for nothing that we will also be safe, but what we have to do on the ground is hold that front line for our people. I like that. Hashtag, it's a two for nothing. <laughs> no, I do. I, I like that. I like that. Um, just remind me, who won out of Taniwhara and Tūranga Waiwai this year? Was... <laughs> <laughs> We're all fun, no, we're all fun. Yeah. Turning a wild way threes. <laughs> right? I just thought I'd mention it. D didn't get a lot of coverage in the media for some reason. I, I don't know why. Uh, particularly from the Hunt. You know, there's a lot of media people from Hunt. <laughs> yeah, very quiet around there. No, I, I, I couldn't understand why. Um, okay. Last thing. Um, and, you know, I've got an 18 year old girl and a 12 year old girl, and I think they look at you and they go, wow, this is, this is cool, man. And we started talking about that responsibility um and and that that's and the burdens that come with that and the cool things um that come with that uh as well and i guess to start to lead to a conclusion i just wanted to pose something to you which is which is um you're the youngest mp in this country since nine, 1853 and the name of that person was i, I don't care don't worry <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered looking. Who cares? He was parking. <laughs> but, um, 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 but you know, you're going to go, that's what people are going to remember you by. right? And um, potentially that's what they're going to try and peg you with. So the thing I wanted to kind of start to conclude with is that don't worry about any of that. It's my 12-year-old, my 18-year-old. It's people's... 13 year olds and, and younger and older um, who won't worry about any of that um, they're going to keep watching you and and following you and yeah I just want you to keep remembering that because I just think that's awesome thank you <laughs> I think it's awesome and I know you want to acknowledge um, Nanaya Mahuta and everything that she's mm. done and, and you've done that I think incredibly well I thought it was an extremely classy powerful, uh, correct <laughs> tekao Māori thing to do for her to concede on the night, to, to give you the night, which, by the way, didn't happen in some other places, mm. which says a lot about her. Mm. Um, 
has she been open to still being a wise sage counsel for you? Is there still a relationship there? You said there, there's an auntie. Is that something that's still going to continue? Absolutely. Um, I think her and her whole whanau have been nothing but um, supportive and true kaitiakitanga is what I preach on about. Um, she was the kaitiaki for me. Um, and I think there's, on that night, it was such a shock. Like, it truly was such a shock. I know. It's just what you said. Yeah, it was such a shock. And you got asked when we did the 2B3 live cross <laughs> yeah. uh, You were at Rangiriri, and they said, um, well, you're ahead. Did you think you were going to win? You went, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shock. And I think we, from recent, from the previous polls, we knew it could be close. We knew it might be, you know, carrying to special votes, but we had no idea it would go like that. And I think all the kids in Tamariki, that was their moment, and they were going so handy, and they were super proud. And um, and then as soon as I saw that phone call, I was like, shit. <laughs> and it kind of changed the whole, and that's that wasn't the goal. Like, that truly was not the goal. And there was, there was huge felt so ratchet um, and because uh, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to be sitting at a table with me and her and I wish that it was both me and her in there but that doesn't mean to say that her mahi will carry on outside of parliament or in another way and shape and form that she continues to do. But what I would also like to say is that a lot of people, actually no, no one's actually said this, only I've been thinking this, is that well, that's some big shoes to fill, but those are her shoes, not my shoes. And I'll create my own path under the guidance and kaitiakitanga of Nanai. And the last, thing, the last thing I wanted to say is 1972, at the presentation of the petition to Piti Ana Motere o Māori, Hana took that petition out to the steps of Parliament. 51 years later, and a month and <laughs> 3.2 weeks, um, Hana walks into that building as the MP for Hauraki Waikoto. Um, you mentioned something about circularity before um, and hashtags tupuna lead. <laughs> you know, I just think that there's a, there's, it's kind of fascinating that the hands of ancestors touch people in certain times and certain places and it must be an incredibly powerful feeling for you knowing that you know Hana was on those steps in 1972 and you're walking through the door that's it I didn't have a question I just would <laughs> raise that point you're probably sitting there going what's he on about but you know I just think that that's I, I look at that image a lot you know for what they fought for and there you are walking through the door as our representative and I just wanted to say didn't I Thank you.